welcome back to the channel and today a quick review for this this is Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad and this novel was uh, written in 1899 so it is a Victorian novel of around 130 to 140 pages all the way up to about 180 pages depending on which format uh, this one is on the short side because it is B format rather than A format but it basically comes out about 40,000 words which makes it basically a very short novel not quite a novella but on that kind of cusp that kind of borderline now, this is a book that is semi-autobiographical uh, of Joseph Conrad's own experiences. It is narrated by a sailor to other sailors, um, but it is really about exploring by boat uh, the kind of darkest, unexplored Africa, um, and which is something that Joseph Conrad himself had to had to deal with. Um, and it isn't always the most kind of page-turningly entertaining read, but it is written with real kind of precision and power and insight. And I've got a few excerpts I'd really like to uh, give you to kind of cover this. Um, but I, I will warn you, uh, anyone that's kind of looking to read this book, um, race isn't handled in the most sensitive nature. This was written about 50 odd years after Queen Victoria finally managed to kind of enforce those anti-slavery laws uh, in England. Um, so imperialism at the time wasn't the most objective and fair. And to be fair, Comrade does um, kind of look into that in a few of these excerpts as well. On imperialism, what greatness had not floated on the ebb of that river into the mystery of an unknown earth? The dreams of men, the seeds of commonwealths, the germs of empires. On men not being treated as men, human beings not being treated as humans. He said, these heads are the heads of rebels. I shocked him excessively by laughing. Rebels? What would be the next description I would hear? There had been enemies, criminals, workers, and these were rebels. These rebellious heads looked very subdued to me on their sticks. When he is faced by men's severed heads being placed on sticks because they are rebels. And why aren't these men just treated as men? Why do they have to be workers, rebels, criminals? Why can't they just be treated like everyone else? On death and mortality. I have wrestled with death it is the most unexciting contest you can imagine. It takes place in an impalpable greyness, with nothing underfoot, with nothing around, without spectators, without clamour, without glory, without great desire for victory, without great fear of defeat, in a sickly atmosphere of tepid scepticism, without much belief in your own right, and still less in that of your adversary. A very poignant excerpt on returning to society after being isolated and peeking behind the curtain of humanity and mortality. They trespassed upon my thoughts. They were intruders whose knowledge of life was to me an irritating pretense because I felt so sure they could not possibly know the things I knew. Their bearing, which is simply the bearing of commonplace individuals going about their business in the assurance of perfect safety, was offensive to me like outrageous flauntings of folly in the face of danger, it is an unable to comprehend. I had no particular desire to enlighten them, but I had difficulty in restraining myself from laughing in their faces so full of stupid importance. I dare say I was not very well at that time. And that is a very real feeling that you can come uh, upon if you have been isolated from society, from infrastructure that we have around us, when you have been faced with daily death and mortality, um, it can be very difficult to assimilate back into normal social culture. You can feel like you're one out. You can feel like everyone around you is a little crazy and um, the social constructs that we create are somewhat pointless. So I'd say this book isn't always the most entertaining, uh, but it is very, very illuminating. And I'd actually give it a 4.2 out of 5.